Okay, uh, hi. I came up with a method that hopefully uh, makes it really easy uh, to record a lecture uh, using tools that uh, everyone uh, should have basic access to here at Georgia Tech. Uh, what you need is uh, things that everyone should have, so you don't need a you don't need a tablet with a stylus or anything like that. Uh, and uh, it should work for pretty much any type of, of lecture delivery, even if you have handwritten notes or handwritten things you want to include. Um, for uh, discussions uh, based classes, it may not work quite as well, and uh, for lab courses, it may not work quite as well. But as long as it's just a basic lecture, it should work. All you need is a PC or Mac, uh, desktop or laptop, uh, PowerPoint, uh, some sort of camera or scanner to take pictures of, of the handwritten notes that you want to uh, give to the students, uh, Canvas, which everyone has access to, and then Kaltura Capture, which is what I'm using to make this video. It's built right into Canvas. Everyone has access to it. I'll show you how to how to use that as well. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay, so here's a, here's an example. Uh, you might have your, your, you just make a PowerPoint presentation or if you want to use the PDF slides, that's fine. Uh, PowerPoint's probably a little better. Uh, so you'd have your PowerPoint up, you'd have your uh, your title slide here. Uh, here's our lecture for, for example, for exponential functions. Uh, you might think why, well, why I'm using exponential functions, uh, maybe for obvious reasons. Uh, you might have some slides where there's text on them that you want to discuss. Sorry, Wikipedia, I stole this from you. Uh, you could even, uh, you know, have things blocked out or appear if you wanted on here. And then if you wanted to go to some sort of uh, written derivation, uh, what I would suggest is, I mean, you could just take your notes that exist already and just picture them and, and put them in there. Or uh, if you want to be a, a little more careful with it, you could just get a sheet of paper uh, facing it horizontally and then uh, draw on it and then you just uh, put white boxes in where uh, things are that you want to reveal and just have them disappear uh, with your clicks so here uh, the lecture would be about uh, you know an exponential function here's the functional form uh, how do we linearize and determine uh, this 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 constant a well we would take the natural log of both sides we take the natural log we see that the natural log here uh, it's going to give us a of x. We take the natural log of the exponent. If we plot that function, that is, we plot the natural log of y versus x, uh, it should give us a straight line. And that straight line, uh, uh, this is the y component, and then the slope here is going to be, uh, you could minimize this by just hitting that. Um, the slope here uh, is going to be this, this a, right? which is y equals mx plus b. So a is the slope. In this case, we don't have a b, and it goes right through the origin. So you see how I did this? I just had white boxes, basically. If we look at the, if we look at the actual PowerPoint, I, I literally just wrote this with a Sharpie on a piece of paper, took a picture of it with my phone, pasted it right into uh, PowerPoint, and then I just have a bunch of these boxes that I've animated to, to disappear uh, and then once you make one of these boxes, you just copy and paste them and resize them all over uh, your piece of paper. Uh, and it's pretty easy then to step through. And so if you had line by line, you could just step through. Honestly, uh, revealing them is probably not 100% necessary. You could probably talk through it without doing that. Just take the picture and don't take the time to do that. But if you do want to step through it, uh, this is a pretty simple way to do that. Uh, so then my recommendations then uh, for doing this is uh, you see I'm using a, a sharpie here on a white piece of paper uh, I think that's better than if you use pencil or pen I mean it turns out okay uh, you can see kind of how it compares but it is a little bolder uh, if you use a sharpie marker uh, so you know otherwise besides using the sharpie make sure your pictures are well lit or adjust the contrast later you can do that right in PowerPoint uh, right on a horizontal page so it fits to the, to, the, to the typical PowerPoint screen, the, the ratio. Uh, and then, uh, like this video, use Kaltura Capture, which is built directly into Canvas. I wouldn't use PowerPoint recordings because then you can't slide through them. It's a little easier uh, just using this Kaltura Capture. Uh, it also add captions automatically when you're done, uh, so you don't have to worry about adding captions for accessibility. Uh, uh, Canvas and Kaltura does that automatically for you. 
Uh, try to keep the videos in you know 10 minute to maybe 25 minute segments. Uh, so a, a typical lecture, 50 to 75 minutes, it might include two to seven videos for a lecture, and that's okay. It's it's easier to record in small bites, and if you make a mistake, it's easier then to go back and just record the short portion rather than a whole 75 minutes or something. Uh, it is best practice to use an external microphone if you have one, uh, but it's usually not that big of a deal if you don't. I'm using just my laptop microphone for this, so you can kind of test that out. Uh, and it's usually good enough, just uh, the, the, the microphone you have. Uh, so how, how do you actually do uh, the recording? So you need this uh, Kaltura uh, capture. Uh, so where is this, this found? Uh, well, it's right, it's right built in, into Canvas. Uh, when you come into Canvas, uh, what you need to find is My Media. So this is just a sandbox I've opened in Canvas, a fake uh, class. Uh, and so I don't have My Media, if you look through here. So what do I have to do to get uh, My Media? Well, you come down uh, to Settings, uh, and then inside Settings, um, if, you, if you look in Navigation, uh, there's all these uh, options, right? And so if you don't have My Media, you're going to have to drag My Media up into one of the one of the possibilities, and I'd also maybe bring up Media Gallery. You might have Media Gallery as well. Uh, then come down here, make sure to save that. And now, in your class, uh, when you go back home, uh, it should show you uh, My Media. Oh, here it is, My Media. So you click on My Media, not Media Gallery. My Media is where you keep all of your uh, personal media. Uh, and let's see if it comes up takes a second. Okay, so here's all the recordings I've made. Uh, and if you want to add a new Kaltura, you want to capture this video, all you have to do is go to Add New. You're going to click on Kaltura Capture Record a Presentation. Now, when you, when you click on that for the first time, it's going to ask you to download it. Uh, so you have to go ahead and do that. Uh, once you download it, though, uh, you may have to reload My Media to actually come here and add new again to, to actually uh, run the recording. But it, it should automatically, that second or third time, you come in here to record the pre hit, click record the presentation. It'll bring up uh, its own. It'll, it'll bring up the application for yourself. Here's here's the application uh, down here on the bottom of my screen. Uh, and so um, when it does that, what it's going to bring up is this recording uh, uh, part of the the application. Uh, so it'll look it'll look something like this, uh, like this here. Uh, what you can do with this is you can you can change some settings, what screen you're recording, what camera function, what audio input you're using. Uh, but really, all often this is fine, and all you really need to hit oftentimes is just the big red button to record, and it'll start recording. Um, and uh, once it once it starts recording, uh, it'll record, and you'll get this this uh, little box like you see down here. And when you're done, you're just going to hit stop recording. Uh, and when you hit stop recording, uh, it's going to immediately bring you uh, to this uh, to, to this uh, part of the Kaltura Capture uh, program. Uh, one thing about hitting stop recording, you may want to pause for three or four seconds when you're about to end the program because sometimes the end of the video gets chopped off. Uh, that's just a, uh, something to be aware of. Uh, but once you hit stop, it's going to bring this uh, a screen like this up. Uh, and then you can put a title for your recording, uh, and then all you have to do is hit this button down here, save and upload, and it's going to upload it directly to your My Media right in Canvas. It's going to put right put it right in Canvas uh, for you. So I made this one make a title here, um, and so if we go back into uh, Canvas, you'll see I already, I've already done this. So here's that video. It uploads. It does take. It may take several minutes, you know, even up to tens of minutes uh, to upload it. Uh, you'll see it kind of doing it there, and sometimes it shows up here still working on processing it. Again, it's adding all of the uh, captioning and all these sorts of other things uh, to the uh, to the video. Uh, so let it do that. And then what you want to do is you want to put this into your um, in, into your class. So the best place to do that is uh, probably um, in the mod in your modules. And I like to have your home page uh, be the module. So right now the home page for this page is actually the syllabus. So what I want to do is I want to make it the modules. What I do is I come in and I make a module. So I create a new module. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, we're called lectures. So this is where all your pre-recorded lectures, all your lectures for your class are going to go. Just add that module. 
here's the module. Uh, make it viewable. Uh, and then add in, what you want to add in is a new page. So you just click a page, and maybe we'll call it lecture for uh, 320, you know, something like that. Uh, we'll add the item. So that add a page inside uh, the lecture module. And then uh, make that viewable, publish that uh, for the students. And then you go in for your, your lecture, uh, for that lecture, and you're going to edit it. And uh, all you have to do is hit this Kaltura button right here to embed Kaltura Media. And when you do that, it's going to, uh, when you click on that button, it's going to bring up your My Media, basically. All these videos in My Media. Again, uh, sometimes it's been a little slow, so uh, give it a few seconds. Uh, to load up. Uh, here it is. This is the one I, I just made. Uh, so I'll hit that, select, <clears throat> and it's going to embed it right into this page. And there it is. And then to hit save. This is already published, so um, it takes a second again to load. It's a little slow to load. Uh, but there it is, and students can watch it. Oh, there's a little test recording. Uh, okay. Uh, so, so there you have it. Uh, that's how I would do it. And if you do it this way, students won't be able to. They won't be able to download it directly to their computer. They'll just be able to watch it uh, through Canvas. Uh, so that's kind of a nice feature. They can't download it and and, and save it and, and upload it to other places. You don't want it uploaded. Uh, uh, but they can view it right here in Canvas, which is a which is a tool. Of course, they have access to. Okay, with that, um, I'll just come back here and give you uh, some some final uh, recommendations. Uh, what I would say to do is to post the videos to Canvas uh, before class. So you know, give a little bit of time before class. Don't expect the students necessarily to watch them before class, but have them uploaded. Uh, then I would use Blue Jeans. Uh, which is built right into Canvas, uh, uh, assuming your class size is less than 150. So if it's over 150, you do have to use a special Blue Jeans um, events, which isn't uh, available directly in Canvas. I can show you that in a second. Uh, but then during that live class with Blue Jeans, just start with your announcements like you normally would in the class, and then just play the recorded videos uh, for the class. Now, why do I say to do this? Well, uh, if something goes wrong with your live class, there's a lot of technical issues. Worst case scenario, the students can just go in and watch those videos themselves. Uh, best case scenario is that you can the students are viewing those videos live with you, and, um, um, and 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 then you can stop the videos periodically to ask if there are any questions, uh, and you can do your best to answer those questions. Sometimes it might be difficult. Uh, and if that's so, if you can draw something, something like this, you can say, "I'll just upload something later," uh, and then just continue on with the video. Um, and then at the end, you can ask for questions and kind of conclude the class like you normally would. Uh, you could choose uh, in Blue Jeans. It's pretty easy. Just hit a button, or actually, when you when you when you uh, when you schedule the Blue Jeans event to begin with, uh, you can actually choose to record it, and it'll 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 go in uh, directly into uh, Canvas. Uh, you do have to upload that and give students access to it afterwards, um, but otherwise, uh, it's all pretty much uh, integrated. So let me just show you that uh, real quick. Um, how you can uh, use blue jeans here uh, in Canvas. Uh, so here's blue jeans. Uh, if you come into blue jeans, uh, see again, sometimes slow to load. Here we go. Uh, you can see you can schedule an event up here. All you have to do is you give it a title 320, some sort of description. Pick your start time, pick your end time. Uh, you can auto record the meeting right here. And if you want to make it recurring, you know, for uh, for your, your regularly scheduled class, you can do that here if you want. Uh, and then it automatically invites all course members as well. So it's going to email, message everyone uh, about it. Uh, and then you save that. And once you do that, I won't do that for this since it's a fake class. Uh, but once you do that, uh, it'll schedule it. And uh, there it pops up here in this first block. These are scheduled blue jean meetings, basically. And then when this one starts, it's going to show up here currently in progress. So students can come in. They'll have the link, but they can also come into their Canvas site into blue jeans and see it's active and, and join the class right here. And then when it's done, if you've recorded it, it'll show up right here. 
And if you have a recorded meeting, you do have to uh, you'll have to go into it, and there'll be a, a link available for you to copy, and you can copy and paste that link into uh, a page or, or add it to the page uh, on your Canvas site for that lecture, so students can then uh, or see the recording uh, of that class. Because as far as I can tell, the students don't see uh, those recorded blue jeans. Only the instructor see, sees that bottom box, those, re those recorded blue jeans. I may be mistaken about that, but as far as I know, that's how it works. Uh, so I'll just leave you with uh, these recommendations again, and uh, hopefully uh, it's helpful for you. Uh, best of luck.